Hello, this is the System Slayer, and welcome to episode 2 of the GitLab CI series. In this episode, we will go over how to configure our very own runner, which will be responsible for the execution of our GitLab CI jobs. In particular, we will be configuring a runner that takes advantage of Docker Compose to spin up our jobs. If you'd like a brief introduction of what jobs and runners are, be sure to check out the first episode of this GitLab CI series. Runners are compatible with most operating systems. In this episode, I will be using the Ubuntu operating system because advanced Docker features tend to work best on Linux. Links to all the pages I will reference in this video can be found in the description below, and the links will guide you to information specific to your operating system in case you need it. With that in mind, let's get started. Since we will be configuring a Docker runner, we will need to install Docker. All we will need in this tutorial is a browser window and a terminal window. So let's open those up. If we head over to the Docker installation page, we can find Docker installation instructions for different platforms. Since we are in Ubuntu, we will select Ubuntu from the list. Again, all pages referenced in this video will be listed in the video description below. Now we need to follow the Docker installation instructions for Ubuntu. Since we are installing everything from scratch, we don't need to worry about uninstalling old versions. So we can skip to the initial section of the instructions. First, we need to update our package managers lists by running sudo apt get update. Next, we must install a few packages to allow the package manager to use a repository over HTTPS. We can simply copy and paste the second command from step 1 in our terminal to do this. Once that is done, we need to add Docker's official GPG key by running the first command shown in step 2 of the instructions. We will verify that we now have the key with the correct fingerprint by running the second command from step 2 and then verifying the last 8 characters of the key as shown. As we can tell from our output, we have the correct GPG key. We need to set up the stable repository we will use to install Docker. This step is specific to your machine's architecture. On Linux, we can check our machine's architecture by running the command uname-m. This machine is running on x86-64, which is the same as AMD-64. So let's make sure that the AMD64 tab is selected, and then run the command that is shown. Chances are that your machine is running the same architecture as mine, but it's good to verify first. Once the repository is set up, we need to update our package manager list one more time, and then we can proceed to run the apt get install command that will install docker. From here we can skip down to the section that asks us to verify that docker has been installed correctly. We can do this by running sudo docker run hello world. After a few moments we see a message saying that our docker installation appears to be working correctly. Next we will install our GitLab runner software. Since we are on Ubuntu, we will select the install on GNU slash Linux link. First, we will need to download the correct package for our system. Let's copy and paste the command for Ubuntu to our terminal. We cannot just run this command though, we must fill in the architecture portion ourselves. If we head over to the AWS index page listed on the installation instructions, we can find the dev section, which is the section relevant to Ubuntu. We can see there that there is an AMD64 dev package. Earlier, we saw that this machine is running on x86-64 or AMD64, so we can see that we need the AMD64 package. 
Let's fill in AMD64 for the architecture in our command and execute it. Once that is done, we can execute the dpackage command to install the package we just downloaded. Once this command finishes, our runner software should be good to go. Let's verify the status of our runner software by running sudo gitlab runner status. Perfect, our runner software is installed and running. Next, we will register our runner. There are two ways to register our runner, using super user privileges and using normal user privileges. If we do not register our runner using super user privileges, we would have to manually start the GitLab runner software using our normal user so that our runner could pick up jobs. The GitLab runner background process that is automatically started for us is a process with elevated privileges, so it only considers runners registered with elevated privileges. We will be registering using super user privileges so that our runner can always be available for job processing without having to manually start the service. This is the page that contains basic instructions for registering runners. Most of the information on this page applies to our scenario. However, since we are planning on using Docker Compose with our runner, there are a few extra flags we need so that our runner can spin up the Docker containers it will need through a process known as Docker in Docker. The containers I am referring to are the containers that would be the result of our Docker Compose file. We will touch on this a bit more in a later video. We need to go to a different page to find the two flags we must pass to the registration command so that our intended setup will work. We can find the flags on the command listed under step 2 of the section titled TLS enabled. The first flag of interest is the docker privileged flag. This will ensure that our runner has the correct privileges to spin up the containers it will need. The second flag would be the docker volumes flag. This flag ensures that the search client directory is available to our job or our runner so that it can take advantage of TLS. As you can see from the command on the screen, we could register our runner in one go, but let's use the wizard so that we can go over each necessary part of the registration process. Let's copy the two flags of interest from this page and append them to the command that starts the registration wizard, which is sudo gitlab runner register. The first thing that the wizard asks for is the coordinator URL. This should be https gitlab.com if that's the place you usually push your code changes to. We will be entering gitlab.com here as we will be hosting our code on gitlab.com and not on a private server. Next, we need a gitlab CI token so that our runner can link up with the project that we will be hosting on gitlab.com. We can go to our project page in gitlab.com, select settings, CI CD, and then expand the runner section. On the right side, we can find the shared runner section. This section shows some runners that GitLab makes available to us for free. However, since we are configuring our own runner, we can choose to disable shared runners for this project. On the left, we find the specific runner section, which would list our custom runners. Here we can find the token that the registration wizard is asking for, we can take this token and paste it into the wizard. The next thing we must add is a description for the runner. You can enter anything you'd like here. Next, we are asked for some tags. Tags are a way to tell the wizard that we would like this runner to care only about jobs that are tagged with certain tags. You can tag jobs in your CI configuration file, but we'll look at this in a later video. For now, we will leave this section blank so that our runner can run any job, regardless of the job's tags. The next step is important. As previously mentioned, we want our runner to take advantage of Docker Compose. The wizard is now asking us to enter the executor for the runner, which more or less defines the type of runner we are setting up. Since we want to use Docker Compose, we want our runner to use the Docker executor. Lastly, we are asked for a default Docker image. The main thing to understand here is that a job itself will be a docker container, and this container will be responsible for spinning up other containers that the job needs through docker compose. 
our job container needs to come from a Docker image. A thorough explanation of Docker concepts is outside the scope of this tutorial, but in order to quickly understand the relationship between images and containers, we can think of object-oriented programming. When learning object-oriented programming, we are often told that classes are like blueprints of a house and objects are the houses themselves. We can build many houses with one blueprint and therefore we can build many objects with one class. In terms of Docker, you can think of the image as the blueprint and the container as the house. GitLab configuration files usually list an image to spin up the job container itself. But if the CI configuration does not list an image, then the GitLab runner software needs an image to fall back to, a default image. That is what the wizard is asking for here. Since we want our runner to take advantage of Docker Compose, we need our default image to support Docker Compose. Luckily for us, such an image is easily found on the Docker Hub. The Docker Hub is a place where we can find just about any type of image we can think of. Let's go ahead and search for Docker Compose here at the Docker Hub. The image created by the user T. Meyer catches my eye as it supports Docker Compose and it states it's good for CI. It has over a million downloads and it has a good amount of stars. You can go ahead and view more details about the image if you click on that result, but I'm going to go ahead and use this image by T. Meyer as I have previously verified that it works for our purposes. Once we hit enter, our runner will be completely registered. We can verify that our runner has been registered properly by inspecting the config.toml file. This page shows us the location of our config.toml file. Since we registered our runner using elevated privileges, we need to look at the config.toml file that is at the location noted in item number one in the website. Looking at this config.toml file, we can see that indeed our runner has the privileged flag because we can see privileged equal true. And towards the bottom, we can see that the search client volume is set to be mounted, which is what we expect. This toml file is not the configuration file that will be used to configure our GitLab CI pipelines, but it's the file that will be used to configure the runners themselves. That's it. If we go back to the runner section of the CI CD settings of our project in gitlab.com, and we look under the specific runner section, we will now find our new runner listed there and it'll have a green dot next to it, which indicates that it is online and ready to process jobs. In the next video, we will be building a GitLab CI configuration file, which will trigger the runner we just configured. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. Your feedback is highly appreciated as well, so please leave a comment below. See you next time. Slayer out.